What if I told you guys there was a third party manufacturer that makes a cheap $55 lens that's actually pretty good? Well, it's decent and I think you should buy it. You guys uh, are gonna be glad to know this is the second time recording this. The first time I didn't have the mic fully plugged into the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Recorded this whole thing and no audio was recorded. Well, it was, but it was the audio off the camera, which is very echoey in this room right now. This is not like a Gerald Undone studio. This is not that good. Anyways, as you guys may, not, may or may not know, I don't like to do a ton of um, sponsored or paid for ads. This is not a sponsored video. It, they did send me this lens for free uh, to use to try out and, and I presume keep. They haven't asked for it back. Um, and I say no to these a lot of times, but when I clicked the link when they reached out to me, I was intrigued by two things right away that caught my attention that were super interesting. The first was the price tag, the fact that this thing is $55. I don't even know how you manufacture a lens, package it, ship it, and make money no matter where it's produced in the world for $55, but $55. The second thing was its size. This thing is tiny. It's a little pancake lens right here, similar to something like the Fuji 2728, or maybe if you're a Micro Four Third shooter, something like the 20 millimeter 1.7 Panasonic Lumix lens. But on top of that, you look, it's a 25 millimeter lens, F2. I said, yes, I gotta try this thing out. But how does it actually shoot? And how's this build quality? Now, if you look at this lens, it's a pretty small, tiny lens. It's um, similar to something like the Fuji 27 2.8 or maybe the Lumix 20 millimeter 1.7. And I'm all about that stubby lens life. I love small pancake compact lenses because I do believe that lenses um, being too big is a big prohibitor to people taking their gear out and shooting. That's a different topic for a different day. Um, but there's some things that are interesting about this. This lens is actually made for APS-C cameras. When they reached out to me, they thought I was still shooting Fuji. I'm not. And uh, I said, hey, you know, I don't shoot that anymore, but I am interested in the fact that you have this in a Micro Four Thirds mount. And so I asked for that. So this is a 25 millimeter on Micro Four Thirds, which is a 50 millimeter. It's an F2 aperture. But if you are on APS-C, this would be a 25 F2, which kind of gives you that, what, 37 millimeter field of view. and kind of lines right up there with the Fuji 27 millimeter 2.8 the Voigtlander 27F2, the 7 Artisans, maybe it's TT Artisans, sorry, 2728. So it all kind of fits in there. But what's different about this compared to the other cheaper 2728 on Fuji or some other lenses, this thing's all metal. It's, it's very well built um, here. The, the lens cap is a screw on lens cap, 43 millimeter threads. Uh, you may or may not like that. Some people like the pinch caps, but I mean, this is, this is metal. This is not cheap. It's a very robust build. And you do have a metal lens mount right here, obviously without lens contacts or uh, electrical contacts to the camera body because it's made for so many different different manufacturers and cameras. Um, but from a, from, a, you know, from a build perspective and what you get is you have F2, let me see if we get the show up, F2 to F16 on this front ring right here. So that clicks nice, it's got stops and clicks for it. And then you have your focus ring right here, this bigger, fatter one. When mounted to the camera body, one of the challenges, obviously, it being a pancake, are ergonomics. And so when I had this on my camera, it was very easy for me to identify the focus ring because it sits out fatter than the rest of the, the lens. And then it was easy for me to find the aperture ring because it's such a small little knurled piece on the front. So I think they did a really good job um, given the, the package that they had to deliver on with the ergonomics of this lens, I'm actually pretty impressed. But the thing is, none of this matters if it shoots like complete crap, it looks terrible. And obviously when you come into some of these $55 lenses, you expect this thing's gonna be a total disaster. Well, I'm gonna show you some pictures right now and you tell me what you think because in many ways, this thing is actually really good uh, for what it is. And in a couple ways, it's not so good. So let's pause the video, me talking part video, and let's put on some pictures that I took over the last three or four days. These are just random shots. These aren't like artsy fartsy shots. They're just random test shots that I took. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the stuff that I noticed while shooting this lens.
All right, so what did you guys think? Good, not so good? I'll tell you, when I first put it on, I was actually surprised. Um, now, this being a manual focus only lens, I don't know if I noticed mentioned that earlier in the video, but it is manual focus only. Um, having to nail focus is obviously somewhat difficult. That'll vary depending on your, your camera model and your, your viewfinder and that kind of stuff. But what I did notice was is that F2, when I did hit focus, it was it was sharp. It was it was it was very sharp. Um, I wouldn't say as sharp as something like my 300 millimeter f4 for my Olympus, of course not, but still very very sharp. And a lot of times, what you can get with some of these cheaper lenses is that wide open, they're very soft and they're terrible. That's not the case here. And so I was impressed by that at first. As you stop the lens down, it got sharper what you would expect, right? Because that's just how lens typically operate. The other thing is, is that when you shoot a lot of these lenses wide open, you lose a lot of contrast in that color. And this lens did, a, in my opinion, saw a slight degradation in some of that contrast in color, but very minimal compared to other third-party cheaper lenses that I've shot in the past. In fact, I thought the color on this was very good. What I'm noticing, to go off on a tangent for a second, is that on my Olympus camera here, for example, when I shoot Panasonic Lumix lenses, Panasonic Leica lenses, those render colors in a certain way. This is the Leica 9mm f1.7. And then when I shoot Olympus lenses, the colors look different on my, on my camera. I haven't done any beta test yet. I probably will. And well, we'll save the topic for a different day. What I did notice right away when I put this on there is this lens has more of kind of a classic color palette to it. I don't know how to describe that. Like I have Canon FD lenses and I've shot some of the older Leica M mount stuff and it changes the way it looks. And I was actually very, very impressed with the colors that came out of this lens. Different than the Micro Four Thirds lens I shoot like the Lumix Leica and like the Olympus stuff, but very, very good. And um, I thought the fall off and some of the separation was very good. Now, when it comes to bokeh, I've shot the like 35 f 1.2 or f 1.4 that they have, that some of these lenses have, and you get crazy swirly bokeh outside of it. And some people love that. I think it's kind of cool sometimes. And some people think it's really um, distracting and it's not pleasing. This lens, I think, falls somewhere in the middle. When I was shooting, I would say nine times out of 10, I didn't notice crazy bokeh. However, I'll put a picture up here. If you look, it starts to get towards the edges. You do start to get some of that swirly, kind of like odd-shaped bokeh. To me, it didn't bother me. The other thing that's probably going on here is this is made for an APS-C image circle. And the fact that I shot these on micro four-thirds, we're gonna be cropped in on that image circle. And so maybe some of that crazy bokeh stuff is outside of the image circle of the uh, micro four thirds sensor. That's possible. And if I just said something scientifically totally wrong, you guys can correct me down below. But you start to see it a little bit on the edges, only when you like are shooting into like greenery and you see some of those specular highlights and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I didn't think it was very distracting. It's not the feather bokeh that you get out of Olympus, um, but it is, I think, okay. But there's a couple I issues with this lens. Um, and it really comes down to, to coatings. Just put it this way. Do not shoot this lens directly into the sunlight. Let me give you guys a couple examples. I shot this just randomly at this blue spruce that is dying in front of my house. I need to go save it. Into the sunlight. At F2, you get a ton of rainbow Newton ring type things. Um, and of course, the image is completely washed out. You stop it down to F8 and you get some of the hexagon or, how many blades are in this? How many aperture blades are in this? One, two, three, four, five, six maybe? You get that, whatever it is, hexagon type shape, bokeh, and again, loss of contrast. So then I shot some portraits, right, of my son. Um, and it was backlit a little bit. Now the sun wasn't directly into the lens, but he was backlit off to the side. And you can see a lack of contrast here. Now all you have to do is kind of go into Lightroom or Capture One, whatever you use, and move the dehaze slider a little bit and it helps take care of some of that, which I've shown here. So that wasn't a totally big deal. But I would say, know this lens and don't shoot it directly into sunlight because you have a washed out image. Um, other than that, you know, just taking some regular portraits, bump it around the house. If you're in light that's behind you or in shade or your subject, whatever, it's got good contrast, it's got good color. And I, I gotta say, like I told you at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna recommend this as a buy for someone who just wants to throw this on like a beater camera or is just getting started and doesn't wanna spend a lot of money that's okay with manual focus and okay with the lack of electrical contacts. Because for $55, you can't go wrong with this. And it actually does a pretty good job. And so for that reason, I am gonna recommend it and that is why I am putting a uh, affiliate link in the description below that you guys can click if you want 
I don't make money off YouTube much, but I did put it down there. But just know what it is. It's a cheap $55 lens that punches way above its weight. Just don't shoot it directly into the sunlight. And you gotta be okay with a little bit of busy bokeh. Um, other than that, like the size, build quality, everything about it, 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 it. This is one of those lenses, like why not? Why not? I guess the only why not might be, would you prefer this or something with autofocus, like the 25 millimeter 1.7? Panasonic lens or the Olympus 25 millimeter 1.8 Those are more three times more four times more than this $55 versus 150 or $200. I guess that's for you to decide but um, I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna throw it on a Second smaller body as a bop around lens for a little bit and see how I like it and uh, Maybe do a bit of a longer term review on it. So let me know what you guys thought about some of the pictures Do you guys think I'm right or wrong about this lens? Um yeah, if you want, go buy it. The link is in the description below. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys uh, on the next video. Spotlight, hot nights, glow red in the stoplight. Ice light, big swerve, big will, rich taste. I serve, line up for the looks that kill. So rich, it can make you ill. Don't choke on the diamond pill. Cheap lines, get a gag like, ew. Go fetch. 